One of the most frustrating things as an artist is when we take a break from our art for whatever reason, and then we come back to it and the drawing just isn't flowing. It feels like we've lost some of our ability and quite frankly, our drawings just suck. This could be a short break or a long break. It could be simply a matter of going to sleep and waking up and our drawing is not quite as good as it used to be. This could be a weekend, a long weekend, a holiday. It could be a month, it could be more. Maybe you have fallen off the proverbial drawing or artistic wagon and you're trying to get back on. Now, the problem is actually pretty simple. We're often just needing to warm up, to re-engage, to get back into a good flow of drawing. But the frustration that occurs when you were previously drawing well and you know maybe you kind of go back to it and it's really not working can be immense. And often this can snowball. And also if you have taken a really long break, it, it really feels like you've kind of lost all of the artistic gains that you have made, that maybe there's no point to this. So I think it's worthwhile not just saying, hey, we need to do some warm up sketches because that's part of it. But we also need to look at some of the mental aspects of this and really have a simple way for you to make sure that no matter how long you've taken a break for, you've got some good ideas and techniques and tools to get back into the drawing flow in a reliable, fun way. <laughs> Welcome to the Visual Scholar Podcast. My name is Tim McBurney. I've been a professional working artist for over 20 years. And on this show, we're all about demystifying the worlds of art, creativity, and productivity so that you can get better faster and enjoy your artistic journey. This is both a very small problem with often really practical solutions, but I know from experience and from talking to people that the effects of this can actually be really, really large. I remember distinctly having periods when I was really beginning to learn art where I would feel like I'd gotten to a new place with my sort of skills and my technique. Everything would be working and then I'd go to sleep and I'd wake up and I'd feel like wait, where did all that go? I'm trying to do the same thing, but it's not working and the feeling is not there. And this often speaks to something that we will unpack as we go through here, that the way we feel about our art and what we're actually doing with our art are often very different. And, and a big part of this is not just, hey, oh, you need to warm up your hand and then you'll be, be okay. It's also that the way you do feel about how your art is going and managing your expectations there as you do re-engage in a creative practice is really, really important. One of the things that I've sort of learned to do is to just be a little bit easier on myself in the beginning because I know that often when we do re-engage after a break that it's all just not going to quite sync up in the beginning. And it's taken me a long time to really build the skills here and to be able to kind of build some frameworks to help people along with this. But I know that students often experience real ups and downs with your artistic ability. And it's not necessarily some linear process where you just get better and better and better. Often, sometimes we have good days, sometimes we have bad days. But the other thing that's interesting, and this is why with this episode, what I want to do is look at it from three different angles. I want to look at it from the angle of the beginner and also the angle of the professional and also another little wrinkle here that I think is often really important if you are a professional is what do you do if this happens in your own deadline and you really just need to go and draw because often people say, hey, I just need to do some warm up drawings and people often work warm up drawings into their their practice and, and their daily rituals. And I think that's a, a really, really good idea. But, you know, often this can also become an art form, right, where people do amazing warm up sketches. And then what if your warm up sketches don't go well? You know, you, you feel like oh, it's not quite going well. Either way, I think there is an emotional sort of portion to this entire equation that is really important. And it can be equally frustrating if you think it's frustrating in the beginning and you're getting to a good place with your art and then you take a break for how long and you come back and all of a sudden you kind of can't draw. It's equally frustrating if you've been doing this for 20 years and you're having a really sort of good day and, and everything's going well and then you take a, a weekend off and you come back on Monday and 
it feels like you kind of can't draw. And, and it's, it's like, well, I've done this a hundred times. What's going on? I should be able to do this. I know my anatomy. Why can't I draw anatomy now? That can be even more frustrating because it feels like maybe we have really lost something. And again, I think this can be very frustrating also if you are on deadline and you have to just sort of jump in and you're not quite feeling it. And, you know, often if you are on deadline, you know, you have been working the previous days, but you'd be surprised the number of times where, yeah, we often are rushing. And because we're rushing, we, we actually end up, you know, sort of creating a whole bunch of work that needs to be undone. So I think there's some really interesting things here. And hopefully no matter where you are in your artistic journey, you can take some knowledge from this. And, and again, a big part of this is just realizing this this happens to everyone. This is a natural part of being an artist. And we always have to work on the transition from our everyday self, where we're dealing with the people we love, the boring stuff that we have to do, our life stuff, taking out the garbage, mowing the lawn, talking to people about non-artistic things, engaging in relationships that are really important. And then we have our ideal artistic self where we are doing our art and we're off in our little sort of fantasy world. Even if you're not drawing fantasy stuff, we're still engaging in this very abstract, amorphous nature of artistic flow where we're thinking about colors and form and brushstrokes and paper and anatomy and visual library and expression and what people are going to think as they see this and we're trying to get into a really, really good artistic place. And, and managing the transition between those two, I think, is a really important part of your overall artistic ability. Because the better you can handle this, I think the happier you're going to be overall. The less frustration you're going to have as you engage. And most importantly, the real thing that I found through creating something formalized here, because I totally understand a lot of people might be saying, and let me know in the comments down below if this kind of resonates with you. Is like, this feels like over optimization, Tim, right? We, we don't need to have a framework or a structure <laughs> for just kind of getting stuck into it on a Monday morning. But I think having a few tools in your toolkit where you know that maybe if you do encounter some struggle or if you just get out ahead of this and sort of build very simple things into your routine or, you know, when you start specifically on a Monday or specifically on a day where you're sort of re-engaging after a long break, it means that that's likely to go more smoothly. And that means you're likely to just associate better things with art overall. You're, you're having less frustration and if you do encounter frustration, you know, hey, it's okay. So we don't go into those death spirals of uh, sort of doom and despair where you're really worried that you have actually literally lost some artistic skill and it's kind of magically disappeared, um, which is kind of ludicrous, but it, it can really feel like that. So that's really why I think this is so important. And again, what I want you to sort of get out of this is just some simple frameworks and understanding for maybe why this happens if you haven't looked into this a lot. And again, even if you're an old hand at this, I think there's a couple of things we can do to really sort of optimize and just make sure we spend more time drawing and more time having fun. So I have three main steps or three things, a three part little framework that I think will give us some tools here. And what I'm going to do is outline those and then we'll jump into the first. And after we've kind of got an idea for what I'm sort of talking about and what I'm recommending, I'll look at how I guess we could modify this or really apply this depending on what stage of your artistic journey or what your sort of goals are right now. Looking at it from the beginner's perspective, the aspiring artist perspective, and also, you know, the seasoned professional perspective. And also, as I said, if you're on a deadline, I think uh, this sort of changes a lot of what we actually have to do. So firstly, the basic idea here, I think, is, is really simple. What we're trying to do is warm up and reconnect with our artistic self. And I think the first step that you need to do is just break the ice. You need to draw in some way, shape, or form. You need to take action immediately, quickly, and do so in a way where you basically can't lose. You're not really trying to do anything. All we're trying to do is break the ice and draw. The second thing is I think it is important to reconnect with what kind of art you want to make and also your own art to really remember who you are as an artist. And, and thirdly, I think the, the last thing that we really need to consider is that often what we're dealing with here is that first half an hour or an hour, that first sort of bit where you're sitting down to draw and often it just sucks, right? We draw, it's not working, it doesn't feel good. 
how do we really think about that time and make sure that we're approaching it in the best way to both maximize our ability to actually draw, but more importantly, to manage a lot of the emotions that can come up and to make sure we don't sort of fall into a lot of the bad patterns where you kind of start and things suck and then you get really frustrated and then things get worse or you get distracted and then you sort of go and do other things. And again, that just prolongs and expands that initial time where you're trying to resync with your ideal artistic self. So those are the three main things that I think we can do. Now, let's unpack them sort of one by one. So firstly, why just jump in? I think this does a number of really, really important things. When you take action, it and physical action, especially, like if you just say, look, I'm just going to draw and you put pencil to paper, if you've been worrying about it, then it's kind of over. You, you've already actually done the thing that may be sort of holding you back or, or sort of often these things can subconsciously, and maybe this is something that happens for you, may, maybe it doesn't, but I know for a lot of people, this kind of stuff can really trip us up where you can easily spend hours kind of fiddling around, sharpening your pencils, kind of doing everything but just getting in because you know that like, oh, I haven't drawn for a while. This is not going to go that well. Oh, I don't really want to do it. Let's just do it, right? Let's take action. Often taking action is a thing that solves many, many problems. So I think just acting, drawing, and feeling like you are sort of making forward momentum, you're doing things, you're breaking the ice is really, really important. It will also do a lot of that basic warming up stuff. And when I'm talking about breaking the ice here, again, we'll, we'll discuss different things you could do. But at the lowest level, you can just do abstract mark making. This is just a matter of doodling. All it, all you're doing is just getting your pencil, putting it on the paper and just, you know, doing little circles, little squares, little sort of telephone style doodles, just kind of messing around. Um, you could also be doing stuff that is just within your comfort zone. If you are already really good at drawing, this is often just a matter of looking at what we can draw that is going to be very comfortable. And I think this allows you to sync up and solve a lot of very, very basic problems. So often what's happening is just that our hand-eye coordination is not synced up. There's some other things that we can do as well to really make sure that it's not just our general hand-eye coordination, but it's kind of where we're sitting. So yes, this could just be a matter of, you know, you're sitting outside, you're sitting on the kitchen table, you crack open your sketchbook and you just kind of start doodling, right? Before you're even considering doing art, you just know you're getting back into it. This could even be the day before. The more that you just draw, write, whatever it is, the more that you use your hand with a drawing, writing implement, I think the more it just syncs up your mind and gets you used to doing that. If you're kind of typing and doing a whole bunch of other things, then your hand-eye coordination is just not synced up. So, so there is an element of that. There is also an element of where you could literally try and do some kind of formalized exercise. Again, a lot of this depends on what your goal is, what stage you're at. But again, at the simplest level, this is just a matter of making marks. It could also be a matter of, you know, drawing and doing some warm up sketches and drawing stuff you're very sort of comfortable with and just kind of getting things going. But either way, the goal here is not to spend long. It's just sort of five or 10 minutes and we're just going to get things going. Now, the other reason that this is really important is that if the drawings do suck and they're just not going well and you're feeling all of that stuff, then this is as bad as it's going to get, right? We can we can improve from here. But often so much of this is that fear of doing a bad drawing. I, I think it feels like the vast, vast majority of issues that we all have when it comes to learning most things is just the fear that we're going to make something bad. And this is a major challenge. But I think that part of drawing is to sort of, you know, get over that to a certain degree and, and find a more creative space where, yes, we're trying to draw better drawings, but we're not going to worry about the drawings that we're doing that aren't working. We're just going to try and make them better. And I think if you get into that mindset early on and you just make the mistake, 
Like you, it, this is as bad as it's going to get. It's fine. You've already done the worst. So everything we can do from now on in the day is just a matter of warming up and making it better. So we're sort of removing any lingering hesitation or building up these kind of starting feelings um, that can often, you know, sort of build and fester and, you know, sort of really take control of a lot of people's emotions. Just get that out of the way. You've already done some bad drawings. It's okay. It's fine, right? They're bad. That's all right. We're going to make them better. Secondly, it's important to handle a lot of the motivation and the inspiration side of our art and not just in terms of looking at other cool stuff. I think what I'm talking about here is really reconnecting with you as an artist. And there's a number of reasons I think this is really, really important. Often you can have a weird feeling and let me know in the comments down below if this resonates as well, but I feel like this is one of the most frustrating things when it comes to creation is that often you can know that doing something is really important to you. And this could be anything, any type of art, any type of creation. You know that this is really important. You want to do it, but you just don't kind of feel like doing it right now. And I think often, again, taking action in the beginning will get rid of a lot of those things. But also, if you have over the period of you being in an artistic break where you haven't been creating, if you have been, you know, sort of feeling like, ah, oh, the reason you've been taking a long break is because you just don't really feel like it. Often, I think this has to do with not really dealing and, and getting sort of excited about art, not really feeling like, oh, this is why I'm creating art here. And I think there's a number of things that we can do. Firstly, I think it's important to look at our own art that we've done, look at our own set of sort of inspirations and where we want to go. And I've, I've made big sort of episodes on the Visual Scholar podcast and, you know, other sort of, I often make this an excruciatingly large aspect of most of the courses that I run, dealing with getting inspired, getting motivated, and, and sort of really dealing with those sides of being an artist. So I've sort of talked a lot about this before, but what I really think is key here is, is to do so in a way that's more personal and is quicker because you don't want to spend all day. And it's a trap often if you've taken a break to be really into looking at reference, like, oh, I'm going to get excited. And then you spend three hours looking at art books and scrolling the internet and, and sort of getting really excited about art. But the trick is that this can even sometimes make it worse because if you're really excited about art and you're looking at other people's stuff, not where you're at, then when you go to draw and it's it's, it's you're a bit stiff, you're a bit cold and the drawing you do is sort of even worse than what you remember doing. It, it's even worse, right? It's even more frustrating because you had all these aspirations, you had all these things. I think the fundamental concept here is that the more time you spend in your head imagining how things are going to go, the, the harder it can be when you actually do engage and actually start doing it because the discrepancy between how you're imagining it's going to go and then how it actually goes sort of gets the, the distance between those gets larger and larger the more you kind of imagine and think about it. So if you've been spending like, you know, a month taking a break from art or just over the weekend or whatever, and you have actually been sort of trying to get inspired and looking at things and you're kind of planning and saying, oh, when I get back to it, I'm going to do this, this and this. Then when you do get back to it and you suck, right, your drawings are no good, it's even worse. It's more frustrating. It's more demoralizing. So I think what we want to do here is look mostly when we're re-engaging at looking at our previous work. So we can look at that in a couple of ways. I think you should look at just your history. And it's good to have this as a tool, either a blog, an Instagram account, an art station account, a website, a folder on your computer, whatever it is that has some of your old art, some of your new art, like a little timeline of your progress. Because I think this reminds yourself that, yes, maybe the drawings I'm going to do today aren't the best. But overall, if you keep applying yourself, right, the line does go up. Your skills do improve and that you are someone who does improve. You've done this before. It's going to be okay. I think it's also good to look at the last pieces of art that you have done. Um, also look at, you know, some of the best pieces you've done. Look at some of the worst pieces you've done. And just kind of understand, remind yourself, stop living in this fantasy of, constantly 
aspiring to this kind of perfect art. Look at where you are. And I think that'll set the expectation for when you do start. Again, I think that, again, we'll talk about how that maybe will change depending on whether you're a beginner or whether you're someone who is already quite an established artist. Because again, you see that the way you approach that will be a little bit different. But nevertheless, we're all probably going to have like this frustration when we get there and it's not kind of working so well. The last thing is, I think it is really important to always be looking at art and surrounding yourself with art and, and spending a lot of your time sort of surrounding yourself with visual inspiration. But I think here, what you want to do is limit that as much as possible. Really see if you can just limit it to a single artist, a single website, a single Instagram account. I think probably the best thing here is a single art book. All right, have a few art books that are of your real sort of favorite artists. And when you are just re-engaging, instead of sitting down and looking at a whole bunch of art books for like three hours before you start to kind of get psyched up, let's just look at one. I think, again, this really sort of focuses us on a low information diet of inspiration. And, and it just allows us to focus more on ourselves. And maybe you can take a few ideas from that artist, but we're not going to get quite so sort of spun around and sort of starry eyed by all these sort of different possibilities. Because again, often one of the other frustrations with art here is that you, you're you often being pulled in different directions and drawing and acting and creating things and engaging in a creation loop. We have an idea, you create a thing, you then see what it looks like, you show other people, you get their feedback, you create something else. This really gets us, I think, to focus more on ourselves. If you take a break and you're not creating, the real danger is, again, we start to fantasize about different aspects of art and things that we want to try and how good we're going to be if we do this or that. And we're disconnected from what it's actually like to do it, to actually create things. So the more that you can focus on yourself and maybe a few little sort of artistic inspirations that you want, I think the better. Now, again, this is also something that I'm not imagining is going to take a lot of time. And this is also key to have this as a tool where you can just go and be like, okay, let's remember who I am, right? This is where I've come from. This is the kind of art I make. This is probably what's going to happen when I go to draw. And if you're looking for some type of inspiration or motivation, let's just look for one artist. And this is where you're much more likely to find some really practical advice or maybe one or two things that you want to try as you're doing art, as opposed to getting torn in a million different directions. I think getting torn in different directions is also one of the things that, again, causes people to become very frustrated because when they go to draw, they often have a whole bunch of ideas in their head that don't match, that aren't really going to sort of work together. And, and again, the way that you refine these is by acting, is by creating your own art. That's really what sort of sorts it out. So anyway, hopefully that's not too kind of in the weeds in depth in terms of the, the mental sort of side of this, but but I really think it's important here to just reconnect with who you are, get excited about art so that you really sort of do want to do this, but we don't want to spend all day on this. This is something where you're going to spend five minutes, a few minutes, just kind of looking at these things and being like, right, that's, that's where I was going. And we're just going to look at one art book because I think that's a lot more focused. It's a lot quicker and it avoids any ability for us to kind of procrastinate and make this concept of looking at inspiration into something that's going to derail our efforts to actually make art. The third part of this little sort of tool set here is that when you do actually go to make art, I think it's going to be good that you've taken care of those things because what we want to do is focus. What I would recommend is to do one sort of minimal focus session, which I think is normally about half an hour this is normally uh, a period of time that you can really focus. And what you want to do is say, I am just going to draw with as much focus as I can, as little distraction as I can. I'm going to give myself the best opportunities to succeed here. And I'm not going to go looking for reference. I'm not going to go looking for stuff. I'm just going to do some drawing or art. Again, this could apply to any type of art, 3D modeling, like sculpture with clay, anything. I think a lot of these same things apply to most physical skills that are artistically based. But 
what you want to do is say, I'm going to commit this 30 minutes to actually doing it and I'm not going to get distracted. And the key here is to say, let even if this is frustrating, I'm going to keep going. I'm just going to see what happens. Take the pressure off yourself being good and just say, I'm going to have succeeded if I sit down and I do this for 30 minutes. Now, this does a couple of things. Firstly, this is going to be probably enough time for you to genuinely sort of get into the flow of things and start to feel it. This is probably enough time for you to get over a lot of the humps and the bumps and the awkward things that can happen when you're not quite synced up when you're doing this properly. Um, and uh, again, you know, I think it also gives us a good opportunity to, you know, do those bad drawings and not get quite so worried. One of the really interesting things that often happens when we are getting frustrated because drawing isn't going well is, is the feeling of time can get very distorted. If you're doing drawing and it's not going well, it can feel like two minutes is an hour. And it can also feel like when you're distracting yourself or if the drawing's not going well and then you kind of quit and go do something else and then it kind of feels like, oh, I was sort of drawing for half an hour. But actually what we were doing is you probably were drawing for two or three minutes and the rest of it was you avoiding this and getting frustrated and looking for inspiration and, you know, maybe saying, oh, I need to do some warm up sketches. So I'll do that. So kind of what we're doing is we're doing a lot of those basic things first. We are doing a few warm up sketches in the beginning. We're just starting. We're acting. We're getting that out of our system. We are going back and remembering. What was I doing before? What was the last piece of art that I did? We've already done that. We've already looked at some cool inspiration. There's nothing left to do besides go through this, you know, half an hour of maybe kind of sucking a little bit of drawing. And I think often what happens is if you really commit to that, you find that, you know, the drawings aren't that good. Like if I do this, often what I what happens is, you know, I do a few drawings over that period of time. It could be half an hour, an hour, you know, if I'm sort of warming up. And, uh, you know, like the first one is not that good. You know, the second one's not that good. By the third one, you know, maybe it's sort of starting to come together. But the way I'm feeling about them versus the way I would sort of dispassionately look at them in a few days is very different because the first one where I'm really sort of trying to feel myself and, and get back into the swing of things, it often feels a lot worse than it is. And also often if we're really sort of worried about it, then that makes us tighten up more and we're kind of, you know, going over things that we're like erasing and we're kind of hacking away at it. And, uh, you know, it, it can really feel like it's a lot worse. So I think often what happens is it feels really bad and then we stop and we don't let the process take care of itself. You do a few bad drawings and what's happening is your mind is just remembering how to draw. It's fine. It's it's 100% okay. It's very natural. These are going to be bad drawings and, uh, you know, we'll look at what you do on a deadline right? in a little bit because sometimes you, don't, you can't do bad drawings, right? You, you've got to get to it. Like, how do we deal with that? another sort of wrinkle into this but I think fundamentally you know if you are just sort of warming up or, or you know this I think applies much more if you're a beginner is that you know it's okay to do rough drawings in the beginning they will probably feel rougher than they are but this is just a natural part of your body remembering how to do all these things and sort of warming up and getting everything working so yeah look at you know, how just a simple focused 30 minutes and then sit back and analyze and be like, okay, did this go well? You know, what happened? Actually look at the drawings, you know, look at them, you know, if you do a few, look at them in a row and, you know, then you can say, look, do I need to do another one? You know, do I need to keep sort of warming up? Uh, you know, should I just kind of start doing my work? Like what should happen? But we're really going to formalize this and set the criteria for success as just you have sat down for 30 minutes and you have done it. All right, so we'll look at how these different tools might be utilized slightly differently depending on whether you're a beginner, a professional, or whether you're on deadline. But before we do that, I just want to touch on something that I think is really important. And this may go into something else you might want to do, which is some kind of more formalized drawing warm up or drawing exercise. So the exercises that I think are quite good for just kind of dusting up the cobwebs are to do some straight lines, some curved lines, you know, sort of flowy lines, and also to try to draw ellipses or circles. So when we're drawing straight lines, typically what you're trying to draw is a very straight line. We want to be able to draw some points on a bit of paper, right? A dot here, a dot there, and then you're going to join them up. And try and do it, you know, backhand 
uh, forehand. You want to do, you know, so you're kind of going from top to bottom, you know, bottom to top. And just kind of this will basically tell you, is your hand-eye coordination in? And I think if you're trying to do these basic exercises, and this would also go for the idea of doing something you're already comfortable with, is if you're drawing something you're comfortable with or an exercise where you really know the outcome and what it's meant to be, and you've also done it before, it kind of says that it's not you, your skills there, you can do this. It's probably just want something really basic. And, and there are a number of these really basic things that can tend to go wrong when you're trying to draw. A lot of them are biomechanic. It's just how you're sitting, how you're positioned. Is the is ha, Has your desk set up being moved, right? Often what would happen is I would be using the Wacom tablets back in the day without a screen. And if they're on your table and they're sitting there and someone bumps them, which rotates the Wacom tablet on the table, you know, five degrees, then all of a sudden, you know, I, I have in my mind what I, the action that I need to do to create a straight line from point A to point B. But because the Wacom tablet's moved, I'm still making the right motion, but the Wacom tablet has moved. And so then it's wrong on the screen. And it takes people a long time to figure this. For instance, there's like you used to be able with an old Wacom tablet, these would be quite small, but people would have dual monitors. So you have dual, probably like three by four monitors. So quite landscape, right? Not, not maybe as landscape as you're imagining if it's two widescreen monitors, they were sort of two square monitors. And what you'd be able to do is map both of those to your Wacom tablet. Now, the problem with that is the Wacom tablet is also square back in those days. So what would happen is people would either just map a small portion of the screen to the Wacom tablet or, <laughs> this blows my mind, or they would just get used to drawing with the aspect ratios that don't match. And so people would literally be saying, well, I need to draw a circle on the screen, but in order to draw a circle on the screen, I'm actually drawing an ellipse on the Wacom tablet. And you just get used to it, right? Your brain will adjust. Your brain will say, oh, I need to draw this thing on the screen. And so I have to make this mark on my Wacom tablet, which is down on the desk. And you just kind of, you, you will calibrate that. Your brain will be able to calibrate a completely different aspect ratio. And people would do their whole art like that. Which again, is, it's not my approach because I want to be able to then go and draw on pencil and paper. So, so I've always wanted to try and make these things as close as physically possible. That's why I think Cintiqs and iPads and stuff are really good. But anyway, the point there is that you can basically calibrate your mind to say a circle is an ellipse, right? The, the circle that I want is actually an ellipse when I draw it. So... The key there to understand is that often there's a lot of biomechanics and the way we're perceiving things that can be very miscalibrated. And, and I think you just need to understand that you need to make sure, am I sitting right? Am I are my feet planted? Is the is the tablet surface or the drawing surface, you know, relative to you know where I am? Is it is it exactly sort of right? Often even humidity, right? If it's really cold, you're, the way you grip the pencil, you know, your fingers are all cold, is that feels very different to if it's really hot, then your palm's sweaty, right? It's going to stick to either the paper, uh, the pencil and paper will feel different based on humidity and temperature to a certain degree. All these things can just affect, which will affect the friction and the way that you would sort of draw and all that stuff. So, so basically, again, it's a, it's a long sort of... Um, sort of explanation, but the, the TLDR, all you need to understand it is, is that often just where you're sitting, the way you're holding the pencil, your angle to the page can just be a little bit off. And if it's two millimeters off here, two millimeters off there, it means when you go to draw a straight line, it doesn't work. When you go to draw an ellipse, it doesn't work. Doing very simple exercises, I think, like draw some straight lines, draw some circles, will kind of just calibrate your mind and make sure that like if things still aren't working like if you still can't draw a straight line but you've been drawing a straight line before it's probably really a matter of like seeing like, is there something wrong right Let, let's just double check everything and often i think just making sure you're you know properly positioned will solve a lot of problems and you'd be surprised the degree to where a lot of the frustration that we have is because we're going to draw a face or some creature or some cool thing and the problem is we're just not quite sitting right so 
all these lines are just off by a millimeter. That's basically often what's happening when it comes to hand-eye coordination. So there's a couple of things you can do. As I said, you can do those very simple abstract exercises. I think just doing abstract mark making, if you're really in the beginning, will help to solve a lot of those things. But again, trying to draw the straight lines will tell you whether or not everything else is synced up, as will you drawing stuff that you're really comfortable with. So if you're comfortable drawing figures and stuff, maybe let's not dive in and you know start things with some crazy cool pose that is sort of pushing all of your anatomical ability. Let's just pick something you're really comfortable with. And that too, if it's something you know you can draw and it's not going well, it tells you it's not you. It's probably just that you're not warmed up or you're sitting wrong. Okay, so if you are a beginner, Often the struggle here is that some of those exercises can be challenging unto themselves. It can be challenging to draw anything properly, a circle, a triangle, a square, a line, all of these things are challenging. So I think often what you're trying to do is ease into the simple act of making marks with pencil and paper. This is just warming yourself up as best you can. You don't want to get too obsessed about you know drawing anything in the beginning if drawing anything is something that's very challenging for you you want to start even simpler so just mess around draw very simple marks you know play around with things and you know jump in so in the beginning with our five or ten minutes it's just a matter of very simple warming up the hand just abstract marks you don't have to do this at your drawing table but drawing it with the tools and implements and in the desk that you're actually going to draw in will help because it helps to solve a lot of those problems i was just talking about now when you come to trying to really look at okay like who am i as an artist you know where do i want to go etc i think this really is a matter of trying to remind yourself that you are improving, right? So looking at the work you have done, that you are doing. And often I think in the beginning, it's important to understand that it will take you longer to get into that drawing flow. So just expect that. That's fine. That's okay. Part of the process is going to be you getting better at warming up, figuring out what you want to do. You don't necessarily have to do any gestural studies or warm up style drawings, whatever works for you. I think it's important to do things that are precise as well as loose. This is not all about loosening up and being flowy with your with your hands. This is also a matter of being able to, again, draw a point-to-point -point line. You want to be able to do both things. But it is just going to take you a bit longer in the beginning. So you're kind of trying to remind yourself that you are improving. Look at your work. Look at the progress you've made. Look at the last things you did. Look at some of the best work that you're most happy with to remind yourself you can do this. And also be very kind to yourself as you start this process because you know this is rough. This takes this takes a lot of skill. And this ability to re-engage with your artistic self is a major part of what drawing is as well. So just go easy with yourself there. And also when you are going to actually do your first sort of 30 minute session, I would really focus on drawing things that you're super comfortable with or have a real plan, something that you're going to really enjoy doing, something that's low pressure, no matter what it is. And again, just sort of ease into it. So in the beginning, it's really a matter of just appreciating that it just takes a long time to kind of warm up and, and practice getting into those sort of states of flow. As you progress, it becomes easier to just sort of sit down and, and then you go. And there's a lot of other things I kind of talk about in some of the other Visual Scholar episodes that you can find in the playlist or on YouTube, talking about building artistic rituals and how setting all of that up will help you right in the beginning to kind of get over a lot of these things and help you get into artistic, artistic flow. But when you take a long break, the first bit is going to be rough and you just have to appreciate that. Remind yourself that you're progressing, that things are getting better. Today might suck, right? But maybe this is just the first day of you sort of getting into it. And yeah, it's just a matter of having fun. If you are an established artist or a professional, this is mostly a matter of optimizing this process. You're probably not likely to really kind of be drawing bad but often I find what happens when you're already sort of an experienced artist this is sort of what happens to me is I'll be drawing something like a, an illustration or a comic book page and maybe I've been doing really sort of well at it right maybe I've been you know I've been on deadline I've been 
really sort of pushing it. And often what happens is you kind of get into a really good sense of artistic flow here. And I think, again, if you're not taking a lot of breaks, it's a lot easier for this to happen. And often when you're in a good sense of artistic flow, I'll just sort of draw something. I have some complicated action pose or something where the figure is sort of twisted and they got one hand up here and one hand over there. And sometimes you can just draw it. You just get into a good flow and you kind of realize that oh, I don't need to do as much anatomical construction. I don't really need to figure out the proportions as much. I just kind of draw it and it magically happens, right? Because I'm in flow. I, everything's working. I've been drawing every day. And then you take a break and a lot of that kind of real inflow stuff kind of washes off a little bit, especially in the beginning. And it can be possible to sort of jump in and be trying to do that again and we're not doing, we're not putting the skeleton in, we're not putting our proportions in, we're not muff, sort of massing in the muscles and kind of doing all of the normal sort of step-by-step -step stuff that will really be more reliable as a process. Again, a more reliable, robust way of creating art. Often we deviate from that, just start to kind of wing it, but we get good at winging it, right? You're just drawing arms and things and legs and you just kind of draw the shape and it has all the muscles in it to begin with. This is, you know, where you have, you know, pun intended, muscle memory, right? You kind of just remember how this stuff works. So I think often what happens is when you then go and, you know, take a break and then you come back to it, it's very frustrating because you feel like I'm doing exactly what I was doing before, but it's not working. And I think it's just important to appreciate that, you know, when you're drawing all day, every day, and you're, you know, doing a lot of work that you really do get into a good sense of flow. And often, you know, these drawings just kind of happen. There's, there's, there is a magical degree to where we're trying to create this two dimensional page that is representing these three dimensional things. We're doing so with line and tone. We're trying to create emotion and structure and three dimensionality and abstraction and cool shape design at the same time. And sometimes you can just kind of draw a line and that magically all happens at once. And that is one of the good feelings of, you know, having a lot of craft and technique behind you. But again, it's not the most reliable way to create art. Often it's better to construct the figure, think about it. What am I doing? So I think often what you have to do is just remind yourself to step back, take it easy and, you know, understand that it's good to, you know, start with the training wheels on, right? Um, if you've taken a break and also the best way to kind of really re-engage a lot of that stuff is to draw work that you're really comfortable with and this is where if you're comfortable like for me I, I always just draw elf princesses elf girls that's kind of what I've always been doing as warm-up drawings and if I kind of do that and I go to draw my elf girl and it doesn't work I'm like well I know this is not because I can't do this because I've done this a hundred a thousand times before um, I could literally almost do it with my eyes closed, right? It, it's it's ingrained. It is muscle memory for me, be, me to be doing this. So if this is not working, something's wrong with these kind of external aspects of what I'm doing right now. Maybe, again, I'm not sitting at the table, right? I'm not really focused. I, I'm not, you know, I, I'm not really there yet. Uh, you know, maybe I just need to warm up a little bit. Maybe I've taken too much time. E either way, I know that this is a good way for me to tell that. And I'm just going to go through the, the list and sort of do the warm up. And in most cases, if I just do these basic things, which is like put pencil to paper, let's just remind myself that I can do this, right? Look at my old sort of art. And then I just say, most importantly, I think for, again, if you're a professional, you might need to, you might not need to deal with so much of the looking at your old art and all of that stuff every day. If this is just a Monday for you, maybe that's not such an issue. But sometimes I, I will actually go quite a long time without doing, you know, sort of detailed illustration work. I might be doing storyboarding for a week. It's a very different type of skill. I might be doing coloring for a week. It's a very different skill. Sometimes I, you know, I spend a good portion of a week doing sort of writing and storyboarding. So, you know, I, I'm not really in that frame of mind of like drawing, drawing, drawing. And, and often this happens. And yeah, it just takes a while, often just half an hour, an hour of really just kind of going through the paces and doing some drawings. And as I said, the first one's kind of average, the second one's, but, but if you just do that, it's normally going to turn out well. So it, often it's just a matter of progressing through that, trusting yourself and just using these comfortable things that you know you can draw as a good barometer, right? As a good gauge for 
whether or not you've sort of sorted everything else out. So if I sit down to draw and I draw something I'm really comfortable with and it's really not working, like I can't even make the lines fit, again, that's where I know it's like, you know, is there something wrong with this Wacom tablet, right? Uh, what's going on? I need to sit better. I need to make sure I'm sort of looser, whatever it is, right? There's there's often something that's really, you know, really going wrong there. And, and that's where often also you need to focus, you know? The other thing that can happen is, you might easily be doing work that's a little bit more low pressure and you may have sort of got into the habit. This is what I do. Often I'll be listening to, you know, sort of podcast interviews and, and things that are maybe, again, I think there's different degrees of things that can be distracting. Sometimes there's, you know, I'd say like a show, a show like this is, you know, it doesn't require a lot of you to think about things. Shows that are, for me, more about politics or something that's maybe more stressful or two people talking at each other, or having a conversation, it, it's more likely that you're going to get distracted by that because it's getting you to think about other things, right? Whereas uh, an audiobook is, is very sort of immersive, right? An audiobook that's a fantasy book is very immersive. So there's degrees of things that will be distracting that I feel like I can often match to work that either is going to take my full focus or maybe less of my focus, let's say. And often one of the things that happens is I will, you know, be doing some more mundane work and I'll get into the habit of like watching or listening to often, you know, just sort of listening to something that, that has some sort of visuals, right? If it's really boring, that's where I'll be like, I'm going to watch, uh, you know, like a movie in the background, right? Just as I kind of do some boring stuff. Again, watching movies you've watched a hundred times, often artists do these things. If you then take that habit, of doing d distracting stuff and you then go and you take a break and then you try and do some very sort of hard style of drawing and then you're still getting distracted. It Often these little distractions can really knock you off your game. So it's, it's also worth considering that. That's why we're just going to do focus, put everything, um, you know, put our best foot forward, make sure that we're doing everything right. And I think in most cases, if you, if you just sort of do those few things, everything will kind of turn out pretty well. Now, if you're on a deadline though, I think that changes a lot of these things. Firstly, you kind of just don't have a lot of time for this nonsense. But even though often when we're on deadline or we really have to get something done, we, we're probably not taking these month long breaks or anything like that. But I think it's really important to make sure that we put our best foot forward. Because I know it can be very frustrating if you're on deadline and you kind of just go, oh, I've just got to get to it. And then you start working on things and look, it just starts to not go well. It's very frustrating because we're under pressure. Often the work that we're doing on the thing is making it worse. We have to undo it. So there's a couple of real keys here. Firstly, is I would really just focus on, let's just make sure we are calibrated. Right? Let, let's, let's draw some straight lines. Let's draw some circles on whatever sort of implement or tool you're actually going to use. Let's just do that for a few minutes before we sit down. I think when, when you're on deadline, it's less a matter of like worrying about, you know, how do I start or whatever. You often have the impetus, the motivation to sort of get going. That's not the problem. You're often not really worried about who you are as an artist. You're just worried about getting this thing done. But I think it is important to just check, right? Can you draw a circle? Can you draw a straight line? Uh, are all your biomechanics working? And then I think it is worthwhile just rechecking because when you take a break and you have been just blind to work, it's often if, when you're on deadline, the challenge is often we're blind to the work a bit. We're just kind of going through it. It's hard for us to really step back and assess it. Let's check the brief. Let's make sure we check the brief. Let's check the emails. Let's reconnect with what project we're working on, why it's going to be good, why it's awesome how we can make it better. And I think that does get us more sort of excited about it as opposed to kind of feeling like, oh, I just have to sort of start this and I know it's going to be a little bit rough because it's a Monday morning. And, uh, you know, like get, get excited about this because I think that is important. And lastly, what I'd say is when you do that sort of 30-minute session in the beginning, I think it is really important to just fully focus, right? Like really get in there, and make sure as you're working on the actual work, because often, again, we don't have the luxury to do warm-up drawings, right? It's, it's, it's fun to do warm-up drawings, but if you're on deadline, sometimes that half an hour that you would spend in the morning warming up is just half an hour you're not going to have at, you know, one in the morning. So 
just work on stuff in the background that's not important. Just warm up or do some kind of task on your sort of artistic project or your artistic piece that is not going to, you know, really sort of be affected by it being, you know, sort of A1 drawing, right? And just kind of do that for half an hour. I think the key thing here is to focus, make sure you get back into flow, make sure you reconnect with the work and... Yeah, you know, just sort of take care of the basics. I think the the danger is often that, you know, you go back and you start and you, you kind of, you know, start working on the main character's face that's the number one read on your sort of big illustration. And then you just work for an hour and you realize you kind of have to undo it or something like that. So that has happened to me a few times. And this is why I want to sort of talk about the deadline aspect of it. Because again, sometimes you just don't have time to warm up. All right, let's look at a few really basic kind of takeaways here. I, I feel like a lot of this advice has been pretty practical and actionable anyway. But if we look at this from a analytical takeaway point of view, I think the key thing here is just to say that often what we want to do is get a little bit more excited about it. If you are taking a break, often we have kind of disconnected from being an artist a little bit and you do have to reconnect there. And it's important to understand that, you know, we need to get excited about the work so it's not a chore. We need to make sure that, you know, you're kind of mechanically warmed up and emotionally sort of excited about what you're doing. And just to understand that fundamentally, if you don't use your tools for a while, they will rust, right? They get a little bit sort of stiff. You know, you need to kind of work them. You need to kind of keep them maintained. And that's just part of it. It's not a big deal. If you've taken a week off and then you get back and it doesn't quite feel as as good as it should, you need to step back and look at one of the things that I think is so important when it comes to being an artist is stepping back to your simple, reliable process. Let's do the basics again. Let's construct things properly. Let's do thumbnails. Let's plan things. Let's kind of do everything right for the first little bit and that will kind of help us build confidence and then probably as we progress you're going to find that you're going to be able to skip steps you're going to be able to sort of you know just start to flow a little bit more and everything will kind of work but yeah we want to sort of remove it being a chore and just understand that you do need to maintain your tools maybe not you know as much as you know some people might think but yeah it's natural that you know if you haven't used these for a while it's going to take a bit of time to kind of get them back up to peak operational ability. If you want a simple bro level takeaway, I think the real key thing here is action is going to solve a lot of these problems. So much of this is sort of caused by thinking a lot while we're on a break and anticipating and being sort of worried about what might happen. And then you sort of put pencil to paper and, you know, it's sort of a bit frustrating. If you just take action, if you just jump in there and you really sort of focus, in most cases, this will just kind of work itself out. It'll be fine. It'll be okay. Action takes care of all of these things. The trick is to understand that you don't like don't freak out as you're taking action, right? If you take action and the drawing starts to suck, just relax. It's a process, right? You're warming up. Your body's doing all the right things. You're getting into flow. Once you do all that, the drawings will get better and it'll be fine. All right. How about a practical takeaway? Look, this entire episode is somewhat practical anyway, but if we just recap simply those three steps, the first is to break the ice. Five to 10 minutes of sketching, I think is a good guide. You can do more, you can do less. The key here is to take action. Don't sort of hesitate. Don't push actually doing it down the road. Let's just sort of jump in, get going, remind yourself what drawing is like. And often this will, again, the action will take care of a lot of problems. And you often, you know, sort of feel like, oh, this is not so bad once you actually start. Secondly, it's a matter of connecting with who you are as an artist and where you're at and getting realistic about what type of drawings you're likely to expect and what you should be working on. I think, again, just often looking at these arts, that these artistic creations that you've done before will get you in a good creative mindset because it's really focused on your art, not other people's art. Again, look at some of the good art you've done, the bad art that you've done, and understand how that's going to relate to what you're actually going to do today. And if you're looking at inspiration, let's keep it simple. Let's go for one artist, one art book, one thing, one source of inspiration. This means we don't get sucked down a rabbit hole of looking at a whole bunch of stuff, you know, in an attempt to get ourselves motivated to, to create art. I think also you want to make this whole process very simple, right? This is not something that's crazy. You can have these things on your phone, right? This is just a matter of like doing it. 
you just you know look at your Instagram account, you look at your art station account, you have a folder somewhere with some of your art, and uh, you know you just sort of go from there. You just sort of chill out. You know you just bring out one art book that morning, and that's what you sort of look at. You know as you sort of drink your coffee or have your breakfast or whatever. And uh, yeah, you know, then you're done. But you know, it's a matter of not doing a whole bunch of other stuff, right? That essentially is the goal. And lastly, what we want to do is when we do engage and do the actual work here, which is when we actually start drawing, we want to just do a focused 30 minute session where success means you did it. And then you're going to step back and decide whether the drawings are any good. You're not allowed to decide after two minutes in whether or not you're a good artist, whether or not the drawings are good, whether or not you failed, whether whether or not your parents are right and you'll never be an artist and you'll never make it. We do not want to think about any of that in the first two minutes. You just want to sort of let the process take care of itself, do some drawing, have fun, put pencil to paper, uh, mess around, be silly. It, it really doesn't matter. Just sort of warm up, get back into the mood. And again, then you step back and then you can say like, look, is this going well? Do I need to do more of this? Like what's happening? But uh, yeah, I think often in most cases, in 99% of cases, in my experience, if you just kind of do this and actually focus, put your best foot forward, it kind of takes care of all of these problems anyway. If we look at this from a philosophical or spiritual point of view, I think this whole idea of engaging and disengaging from your artistic self and making sure that you connect this ideal artistic version of yourself where you're in flow, you're creative, you're drawing, you're doing all the things you want. Often, again, there are feelings and emotions that we associate when we're drawing well. And, you know, we want to make sure that we take that and we connect it with the, the version of ourselves that, you know, isn't our artistic self, which is often the person you need to be when you're talking to people, when you're having conversations, when you're having relationships with people, and when you're taking out the garbage, when you're mowing the lawn, when you're doing the dishes, when you're doing all this mundane stuff, going shopping, you know, running errands. You, you can't be in flaky artist mode when you're doing that. You need to listen to people. You need to be focused on them. You need to be present. And, you know, being an artist is often where you're being present with your art. It's not being present with other people. So making sure that you handle that transition in general, I think, is a really, really valuable thing. It's one of the things that I think will, it's not necessarily going to make you a better artist, but I think it will allow you to do more art and enjoy the art that you're doing. And I think often if you do that, you're going to do more art and that will make you better. So I think understanding this is really important. And the more that you can appreciate these times where you're going from, okay, I've been spending a lot of time in normal non-artistic land and I need to sort of re-engage. Just stepping back and seeing that one coming is most of the battle. Just understand like that will happen. I think often where this is a real frustration is where you don't see it coming and it's Monday morning, or you just kind of realize, again, this will often happen to me, I, I will kind of feel like I've, oh, I've been working really, really hard. And then I realize, again, I go to draw and I'm like, oh, I've got to do this thing, i got to do, do, and then I kind of go and I'm like, well, this is not working as well as it should, right? I should be able to do this. I'm a professional artist, right? And then you kind of get sort of frustrated, like what's wrong? Uh, and then I kind of realize like, oh, yeah, I haven't really done a lot of serious drawing for like, you know, a long time. Cause maybe I did some on like this day and this day, but then I did this other thing and then there was a weekend and then I did a few other bits here. And then I was recording videos and editing videos and, you know, doing all this other stuff. And then I was like, Oh, actually, yeah, I haven't done much drawing. Right. Um, often that's where it's going to become a problem because it's not going to go well. You're not going to see it coming. And that's when it actually becomes frustrating. And I know that that can be a real sort of worry for people, you know, it, this, the reason I talk about this is because, uh, you know, I, I think it's, it's one of these things that has affected me drastically. And I, I kind of notice it more and more. And I really do think the more that you have a few of these tools in your back pocket. And the reason that I think it's worthwhile making a whole episode about a really simple thing, which is like, how do you get better at kind of warming up? I think is really important because if you have a few ideas here, Often what we're trying to do is deal with that, again, that initial two minutes, the three minutes, the five minutes, the frustration that can occur when things just really aren't working. If you know that, hey, this is normal, this is fine, I just keep going. And if this really doesn't work, I've got maybe more of a framework. I can really try and do something. 
uh, with this, you know, to make sure I'm warmed up properly. And, you know, maybe, you know, I, I've got some, I've got some, some solutions here. Just that is probably going to take a lot of the pressure off as well, because often it's just this sort of, you know, spiraling of despair that you can get into where you really kind of think like, maybe I'm, maybe I'm not an artist, maybe I've lost being an artist, right? And, and I think, again, when you are being a bit creative, and we have good imaginations as artists, sometimes that stuff can feel very real. So I think just having a bit of structure here can really help to take the pressure off you. And I think a lot of this is a pressure problem anyway. So I think there's a lot of things here that can really, really help no, no matter what kind of stage you're at. But yeah, a lot of this is just a matter of also seeing it coming, as I said. So, you know, often I will just try and do a few of these things. If it is Monday, I'll sort of track and I'll be like, yeah, I haven't actually drawn a lot, but I'm going to really need to draw on this day. And so I'll just kind of make sure like, let's do some sketching the day before. Let's, you know, make sure that I'm kind of warmed up. Let's sort of test the waters. Let's see how bad things are going to be. And uh, yeah, I find just doing that, the more I am conscious of it, the, the less it happens. And I really have found that in, in most cases, I've kind of been able to kind of sort this out and not have any of these kind of, you know, freak out, spiraling into despair kind of moments. But um, yeah, anyway, I know this is a real issue and that's why I wanted to kind of bring it to you. Anyway, that's all we got time for on this particular episode. Let me know in the comments down below whether you have had one of these situations where you've gone to draw. It really hasn't turned out that well. Maybe you have spiraled into despair like I have sometimes. I think just hearing people's stories about this can be really sort of useful because I think this is just often just a part of being an artist, dealing with a lot of these kind of mental struggles and, you know, figuring out how you overcome them. If you've got any ideas or strategies that you found useful, that would also be really good to hear. I'd love to hear that. But uh, yeah, hopefully I've given you enough frameworks and strategies, techniques, tools, whatever you want to call it to kind of help you deal with these issues. Anyway, thanks for hanging out and I will see you on the next one.